me, gag me, take me to the bunny ranch. People dying, kill me in the packing house. Even you. Hey! Hi, my name is Ryan Nemeth. No, I'm just kidding. I'm Macaulay Culkin. Ryan Nemeth is actually my guest this week. Uh, Ryan Nemeth is actually a really cool guy. Um, he's done some uh, wrestling, some indie kind of stuff, but also kind of, you know, played around. He's fooling around with some of the, the big time stuff. Uh, he's also funny and just sweet. And honestly, he's, he's you know, he's the right amount of jacked. It's, you know, it, it doesn't look like he's on the juice. Like he actually looks like, you know, he's the right kind of jacked. Um, so he's a total sweetheart. I've been wanting to have him on the show again. So, you know. We, we we talked like a day or so ago, and I was like, you want to come by on Monday? And here we are, you know, so he uh, he showed up on Monday. So he actually, uh, I'm recording this intro after the show, so he actually just left. So I can talk about him behind his back. Um, but we wore matching t-shirts and everything. Uh, it's kind of adorable. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I could probably take him in a fight. So you're going to learn more about him during this podcast. He's cool and sweet and all that kind of fun stuff. So uh, enjoy. Rink a dink a dink, wink a dunk a dink, ring a dink, do me and take me to the bunny ranch. So listen, uh, the all mics right. are hot. Oh, I, 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 I usually kind of keep the mics hot just in general. So in case. if there's anything that you say that you don't want on the show. We'll take it off. Don't worry about it. If I confess to some crimes. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, I just did one with uh, Natasha Leone, and there were two things. It was uh, there was a Nazis reference, uh, um, but it was okay. I was talking about my haircut. You know, oh, yeah, I wasn't yeah. actually talking about Nazis. I think we can all agree that Hitler's there's, terrible. There is a pretty yeah yeah. I don't like Hitler. Yeah, I never have. Yeah, and then I, then I made a joke about like what your like racist grandma would say, mm -hmm. and yeah, we cut that out too. So don't worry about it. I was on one. I'm not going to say it again because I don't want Sean to fucking have sure, to cut yeah. it out again. <laughs> the uh, what does it think? Trent Beretta and uh, his tag partner do some some interview show for High Spots, some like at indie shows, and they did this whole long thing like making these jokes about Pee Wee Herman, and I I was like, hey man, I'm not really comfortable with any of that. Please edit all that out. That guy likes me. I like him back. This is not cool. Yeah, Please yeah, just he's, take all he's that a likable guy. There's no chance he's gonna be watching this thing. But if someone like tweets it or tags and like, uh, yeah, he can, I don't he, want gets, that he can still find out. Yeah, yeah, of course. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. he'll be like, and Ryan, Paul, Paul's a nice guy. He's the man. He's yeah. the best. Yeah, he's fucking yeah. He's fucking he's fucking Pee Wee. He's cool as hell. Uh, um, I actually just showed my lady uh, the other night, uh, um, uh, King of Comedy. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you ever see that? The Scorsese movie? King I'm, Comedy with De Niro? Like, no, you know? no, of, have not seen. Yeah, see, same That's with me. I'm, yeah. Yeah, same with me. I only saw it for the first time about like two or three weeks ago. and then That's pretty cool. But I immediately wanted to show my girlfriend because it's, it's that good. Well, uh, that's an exciting thing. Yeah, but at the end, he's kind of dressed like Pee Wee Herman. And apparently, <laughs> yeah, no, and apparently there's a connection there. I think like Scorsese or Sweet. whatever saw a young... A young Paul Rubens, look at whatever he was playing, like, you know, the Roxy or whatever. Dang, like, that's you know. pretty cool. Yeah, and so he's dressed exactly like Pee Wee Herman. It's really weird. I have something. It's a good sign when you want to show somebody else and you will watch it again. Mm -hmm. That's a really good sign. Yeah, exactly. No, with, with things. While I was watching it, I was like, I can't wait for my girlfriend oh. to see this. Like, you know, yeah. Pause so. everything. Get here. Hurry yeah, up. Yeah, well, exactly. Like, yeah. So, you know. Uh, um, I didn't do that with Avengers Endgame. Uh, um, I have... I didn't see Avengers Endgame. Yeah, um, well, you know, you're, you're, you're like the one because it, it made $1.2 billion I know, opening it's weekend. crazy, man. Yeah, worldwide. It's pretty insane. You're pretty up to date with all Avengers stuff? Yeah, all I'm a comic book fan, so, you know, I, I had to see it. I mean, you know I, li I liked it all well and good. Me and the lady, are, we're actually going to go uh, tomorrow afternoon because I saw it, like, opening night. Whoa. I saw, like, I saw it, I, I midnight showing on, like, Thursday. Yeah. I'm trying to decide if I want to embark upon watching all the Marvel movies. That's choice one. Beginning Game of Thrones is choice two. Yeah, same. But choice three, what is choice three? Uh, Cobra Kai on YouTube. That'll be the easiest one. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I saw the first two episodes because they were free. It was mm -hmm. before I sent the premium yeah, kind yeah. of thing. I'm like, yeah, no, it actually looked good. Looking at, it, I heard it's really good. Watching watching the trailers for the second season already kind of gives you a bunch of spoilers for the first season. I haven't seen a trailer at all for any of it, but just everyone talks about it so It's much. all over the NBA playoffs, so when oh, okay. watch an NBA right. game, yeah. like, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, uh, it's those three, and the other two, the Marvel movies seem really daunting, and Game of Thrones seems, like, so daunting. Of yeah, it seems pretty on. thick. I mean, my lady is super into Game of Thrones, and all I haven't right. watched any episodes at all. I've seen thing. two episodes... 
out of order, like in seat, like sporadically, like separated. And I was just sat there watching, like I don't know what's happening. Yeah, this is, like, at it, all. Like, you couldn't even put anything. I'm, together. I'm a binge watcher, so that's okay. kind of like I kind of want it to kind of run its course and then watch it all at once. That's what I finally did so many years later with Harry Potter. Oh really? Oh yeah. I did that, that like last year. I read them all and watched them all way 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 after and i wonder if the same thing will happen with these two maybe game of thrones will be that way yeah i mean I e- everybody everybody says it's like yeah it's the tits so and it's... everyone i talked to was like you're so obsessed with this adult harry potter thing this is the next step you have i was like yeah maybe yeah uh-huh. see I-, I was dating a different lady back then and she was really into harry potter so i uh-huh. had to go to all the movies as uh, they were happening yeah whoa and so i go to like the opening night kind of things and all kind of that stuff. was just so it was... not in my peripheral at we, all man we split up and I ended up watching the last, like, three movies just because like, I'm a completionist. <laughs> you have to know what happens, yeah. Yeah, I, it's like, all right, fine. Like, you know, I mean, I was wholly underwhelmed by the entire endeavor. I know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> My cat's just being all cute with his... He's got the longest fucking tail ever. That's dude. a long tail, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, he's just... He's being a jerk. He's 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 flirting with you. Is what he's doing. I can't look away. Those eyes. I know. The, I know. He's pulling me in. Those moon-shaped eyes. Uh, um, wow. So, uh, um... You've actually, like, okay, so, uh, uh, just for our audience, hello. Hello. Oh, uh, yeah, we've been talking this whole time. I know, I know, exactly. So, uh, um, so, it's Nemeth over here. Hello, I'm Nemeth. Yeah, just, I just am Nemeth. Nemeth. <laughs> just, just, just Nemeth. That's, every time I refer to you, I just call you Nemeth. A lot of people just call me Nemeth. That's yeah, all right. Yeah, exactly. There are uh, no others. I am the only Nemeth. Yeah. So, so you, uh, you've done some professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, uh, you're also uh, you've done comedy. And I'm also, out there, man. And also you uh, you're also a personal trainer. Yes. What do you think? Right here. Oh, look, you're look, look at that bicep. Jacked. Yeah. Well, it pops out. Look, look at yeah, it. Yeah. Look at that. Right definition. There. Check, check that out. Boom. Throw a little spray tan. Low on body there. fat. You know. Yeah. Put a little spray tan on me. And yeah. I'm a, I'm a somebody. Put you in a little speedo. Go on stage. I know. I've been wanting to go. Uh, I, I I've been pitching myself because I've done some uh, stuff with WWE. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I've been pitching myself for both the Royal Rumble and the Andre the Giant uh, uh, Battle Royal. It, has this not? Why? Uh, I, it has just hasn't happened yet. And the key word is yet. I'm going to be in one of those Battle Royals. Yeah, those Royal other Rumbles. two clowns on there. How come you can't be in there? Well, no shit. Like Drew Carey can do it. I can do it. Yeah. Can, yeah. So I, I, I pitched myself this year. Was it Michael Che in it this year? Yeah, Michael Che. Yeah, and Col- Colin right. Jost. You know, yeah. yeah. You can last longer than them. Yeah, I could totally do that. Surely. I, I can moonsault. I I've think done, so. I've been into a pool once or twice. You know, so well, it's, it's, it's exactly the same. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's the same the thing. Same it's thing. The, it's yeah. the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Braun Strowman can toss me out anytime he wants. Do you remember the, the ads they used to play or show 10 years ago of, for the Royal Rumble in, in WWE Magazine? I don't know if you used to get that or not. Mm-hmm. I did. And it had them all on a subway train, everyone just going... Like fighting. Yeah, they're all they're all like all crammed into a subway train. I thought that was so funny. Yeah, no, it, it, it's apt too. You know, yeah. Uh, it's like if you can ride a train, you could win the Royal Rumble. No shit. It's the same. Exactly. Like, you might even just listen, put me in like number four or five. I'll get out of there pretty quick. It'll be good, man. Yeah. I'll Hopefully, quick because that could last a long time. Well, no shit. Well, actually, actually, I just rewatched uh, this year's one. It's not even. It's not that long. It's, oh, yeah? it's actually it's it's fast. It's what about know. that forty man one or whatever? The oh, big the one? crown jewel thing. Not crown jewel, but the other one, the greatest Royal Rumble. Like, yeah, yeah, dude. Well, there was the forty man one that was forever. Though. That's the one I'm thinking of. That the one, Del Rio one. That one was like so yeah. many people. Forty yeah. many people, I guess. It was yeah, forty many people. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm I'm a fan of a Royal Rumble. Like, yeah, me too. I love yeah, them. Yeah. If anything, actually, here, here here's a pitch. Okay? So you do a whole Royal Rumble. I don't work there. I'm just saying. Okay. I'm going to pitch you anyway. Right, yeah. I'm going to pitch you anyway. <laughs> so you do your whole Royal Rumble, and then you have one of those spots at the end that's kind of like a, um, you know, when like Cena and Batista went over at the same time, mm-hmm. or Rock and, uh, uh, and Big Show, mm-hmm. or... Whatever. I remember on SmackDown it was Kurt Angle and Mark Henry once. Yes. But he was like a half inch. Exactly. Yeah, I love that. So you do that. And then what you do is, like, you know, you have their little argument. Remember Vince came to the ring and tore both of his quads? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. So you have that kind of moment without the quad tearing. Um, oh, man. Secret quad tear. Secret quad tear. Uh, um, and then what you do is you say, all right, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do the whole Royal Rumble all over again. But now one minute, everyone in the back sign up so now you actually you're doing two royal rumbles in a night oh that's never happened yeah yeah exactly and then you do like the the second one is like you know only one minute between and it's all the people like you know there's people that were already in it before but there's also people that weren't in it before hmm. and thing so it's like you know so if like let's say i don't know dolph ziggler uh, wasn't in the first one here to He's, show the world here yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah okay so uh dolph ziggler um <laughs> so what's he like in real life uh taller than you think <laughs> really 
but not as short as you think. Oh, okay, so somewhere, somewhere in between. And that's that's all there is. <laughs> that's to that's say all about there is that. to know. He looks he looks like this guy. Oh, look at that! When yeah, I you, had, you gave me a uh, shirt. Yeah. I'm indicating the Nemeth Bros Motley Crue style T-shirt. Uh, so I asked Leah Ticcioni, who's Mad Magazine illustrator, really really great artist. I said, "Can you draw us and make us look like Motley Crue?" And so. I was expecting these skinny, little, spindly, limbed men. No, he made you, made, made you all buff. <laughs> he made us the biggest people of all time. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Ryan gave me a, uh, a T-shirt of uh, yeah himself and his brother as the Nemeth Bros. Whereas uh, Tommy Lee and Vince Neil of Motley Crue, they got the umlaut on the name. Yep. But yeah, she. I love what she did. I think it looks, looks really good. Oh no, honestly, it's badass. It. it actually kind of has a uh, um, the 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 art style is very Venture Brothers. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. It's yeah. Very Venture yeah, Brothers. Yeah. yeah. Or, or the, uh, yeah, Dolph and, looks like a Brock a little bit. He yeah. does. Mm-hmm. It also reminds me of the Bad Boys Club, those t-shirts from the 90s. No, I don't, it was, I don't know It's one. like a, just a big jaw, like haired muscle guy just going like, It's like a... It's, I'm gonna, I have to look this up now. <laughs> no, no, I have to find it. I can't describe the bad... It was like for children. It was a logo <laughs> that was on clothing. How old are you? I am 34. Four right uh, now. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh, uh, the older you get, the more I don't remember that. No, I don't remember that logo. It just it was you know it was around. I, I love how the older we get, the the harder it is to remember our own age. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, last night I was sitting around, I was playing some video games, and I go like, "Wait, am I thirty nine or thirty eight? Like, it's like, "Oh, okay, still thirty eight, still thirty eight." I had that thirty eight and a half. Two years ago, I was driving. I was driving somewhere, maybe in around Venice. I kind of remember being around near the water, and I had a panic moment of like, "Oh God, am I?" turning 30 this year and i was like I, my heart was going like, like oh no your life's you're you, things are passing by what's <laughs> happening what are you doing in los angeles and then i was like oh no no no, i'm 20 i'm turning 29 and then i was like wait wait a second i am i'm already 30 and, like that, and i was like i'm 30 what the hell wait i'm already 30 but then i was like oh no i'm 32 like it was like bam 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 all these things hit me and then I started to think, why didn't I know that? Is that because I'm 30? So I'm forgetting like how old I am. Yeah, exactly. No, I, started, the older you get, I looked the at my license. Is. I was trying to do math. I was like, when, what was my birthday? What was my birthday? What happened? I think I called my mom. Was like, <laughs> Did you look at your license for your own birthday? Yeah, and I asked her. Like, I called my mom. Like, how old am I? She goes, I don't know. I'm like, oh, this is not. So it was like a <laughs> even your own mother doesn't know your age. She, but she just, did, she was just like, I'm busy walking dogs. What do you want from me? I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm panicking. Reti- I'm retired now. You know, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, where, where are you living? Uh, last time I saw you, it was Vegas. I think we were in that's right yeah that's what I I mentioned that to Ryback yesterday in the podcast he was yeah. asking about doing some kind of a podcast because uh, I think he's you. Vegas isn't he he's in Vegas so I, I said you know the last time I saw him was in Vegas I don't know how often he frequents this town yeah 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 Always, uh, always looking for a Vegas trip. I love the Vegas. It's not Vegas. It's La Vegas. Love La Vegas. The Vegas. The Vegas. Uh, where, where are you living? Are you, are I you... live in Los Angeles. Probably. Oh you're out here? Yeah. The the trip that I saw you, I think the day after that or the day before that, I went on this amazing hike with Dean Ambrose. Oh really? Oh yeah, because he's out there too. Yeah. Or at least he was out there back then. I messaged him and was like, "Where were some good hikes?" And I didn't realize he was injured and off TV at the time. He goes, "Yeah." He was like, "What hotel are you staying at? I'll be there at 9. <laughs> so in the morning, I woke up and went outside and got picked up for school by Dean Ambrose. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, and you went hiking. We went on a really nice couple mile long giant mountainous hike. It was amazing. It was oh, really? Because really, yeah, really, really cool. it's, it, it seems like very there's a lot of desert out there. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't really know what to expect, but it was so cool. Good views. Oh yeah. All right. Cool. Good and he said we got to some point where he was like, "This is where most people usually stop," and I was like, "Okay, we're not stopping." We're and not we, stopping. We kept going, and then beyond <laughs> it, the next thing we climbed over was this like secret mountain like pond thing. Nice. And to see, it's pretty beauty, beautiful, right? You know, if you stopped, you wouldn't have saw it. I'm like, hey, okay. Right. He's funny because I've only met him like once or something like that, and. He seems really inaccessible. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty closed it's, off. Uh, yeah, pretty closed off. I was yeah. like, hey, man, like, really good work tonight. Somebody's he's like, yeah, okay, great. Like, whatever. But <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, never mind. Like, you know, I'm not looking for a thank you or nothing, but at the same time, it's kind of yeah. just like, you know, like, yeah, like, you, know, you can acknowledge the fact that I told you that you did good work. I, I enjoy you. You were great. Oh, he's just like, oh, yeah, huh, huh. Yeah. Like, yeah there's exactly. a, lot of mum- a lot of mumbling. I know. Because uh, uh, his wife is, like, really, like, this open book kind Dude, of like. they're so the opposite. I know. The way they communicate right no shit like yeah it's 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 funny it's funny because i've been a big fan of his i always thought he should take more of a ruddy piper kind of angle with his stuff yeah that'd be cool. i would love to see him put an eye poke into his repertoire like does he not use eye poke no he doesn't and i think an eye poke would be really really good for his i texted repertoire. her first about the hike yeah <laughs> i said renee do, do you know any hikes around here she goes ask john and i was like okay and then i was very surprised that he was 
instantly ready to go. Like, let's go tomorrow morning. Let's go up. time. Yeah. Let's go time. Because <laughs> she is more accessible. Yeah, of course. I'm like, she'll be friendly. She'll tell me where oh, to no, go. She's warm as fuck. I've only met her once and she's like she's incredibly awesome. warm. You know, yeah. But yeah, 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 Dean, like, yeah, it's kind of just, I, it's not just me. It's other people who've met him. They kind of go like, yeah. yeah, like he just like, yeah, he keeps everybody at arm's reach. It seems like, you know, you know yeah. like, that's the read I got. Yeah, I don't think it's a necessary. But listen, he wants to go thing. hiking with you. And again, I mean, listen, I, I, there wasn't a lot of talking. I mean, even when you're with him <laughs> for hours at a time, it's very like, he's not, yeah, he's not sharing his he's soul. Not super warm, but it, I mean, a little, I don't know. <laughs> and sometimes I just don't know what he's saying because he mumbles so much. <laughs> but we all have, you know, that we all have our bugaboos. Oh or, yeah, or no, quirks. are you kidding me? Like, yeah, no, I'm a, you know, I'm a fucking asshole. So there my you dog's go. asleep right now. I know they're all asleep. So there's another one there, sleep, and then cat asleep, cat I, asleep. I'm trying to get tired myself. I know that's what they do to me, man. Like my my animals, they make me. They make me sleepy. It's just so comfy. You can put your head on them or something. I know. They all look like stuffed animals. And they like, it's like, I just want to like just lay down on the couch with them and stuff. And so Dang. next thing you know, I sleep like 15 hours a day because of these little fuckers. Like, oh, only yeah. getting 15 an hour or a day? Yeah. yeah just, just that. Oh, I didn't man. wake up until about 1.30 today. Look at me. I missed a meeting you know, and everything. It was great. Like, That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was just a phoner. And honestly, it was one of those things where like I, I didn't get invited until the last minute. And then. Screw you guys. I'm going to go to sleep. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, my lady's been working nights lately, oh. which means I work nights. You have to work nights. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I keep her up, and Dang. you know, yeah. So it's 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 been it's been a thing. It's yeah, but it, a good thing. Like, listen, someone's got to bring home the bacon, right? Like, yeah, someone this, this, needs. This yeah. podcast ain't, ain't making me all that much money. So someone's got to go. buy the cat food around here. Yeah, no shit. Actually, she does buy the cat food. Funny enough, um, this is a tiny little dog, but I imagine the bags of dog food are like a hundred pounds and just enormous. She buys probably. in bulk. Like, yeah, oh, you, you, yeah, to, you yeah. should see, like, yeah, like, it, honestly, like, if there was a zombie apocalypse, and, like, we had to, like, These animals will be fine. <laughs> yes, the animals will be fine. <laughs> like, yeah, we're, yeah, we got a good year, you know? Um, so, you have a comedy background. I don't know a lot about this, but, like, you did, like, something like, what, like, Groundlings or something like that? I did. That. Well, okay, I was just talking about this. Like UCB, what was it? When I was in college, I went to Xavier University in Cincinnati, and that was exactly when... My brother was in, at OVW in Kentucky, so mm. they're very close to each other. So I would go Wednesday nights. How, I love how Ohio wrestling was in Kentucky. Ohio wrestling. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the Cincinnati airport is in Kentucky as well. I, I know that. It's yes. So, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> but still, I, yes. I don't really have a bone to pick with that. I don't really care, but it's just like, well, why? How come? <laughs> so I would drive to OVW to watch him wrestle on Wednesdays and sometimes Saturdays. And I was very into the sketch comedy improv thing in college, and, and I was spending summers in Chicago doing I.O. and Second City classes Second and training. Second City, that's yeah. the one, yeah. So finishing school, I was like, I guess I'm going to move to Chicago and just keep doing this. But then the more I would go visit him and see what he was up to, and then he was in FCW in Florida. I went to visit there and met with all the coaches. and <laughs> Which is probably show, in Georgia, right? Which no, is okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it's, it's, in, uh, it's in Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's in Cuba. <laughs> it was like on my mind to like, maybe I should be I should be wrestling after school. Like, what am I? It was like a little fork in the road only in my brain, you know? Yeah. And I ultimately decided I'm going to move to Chicago and pursue comedy. And like the week I got there, I was like, this is the wrong move. You should not be here. You should be wrestling somewhere. So Nick would come wrestle at uh, the Allstate Arena. Is that the Chicago one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we would meet up. And like, dude, I got to get out of here. I got to start wrestling somewhere. I got to learn. And I was trying to find a school in Chicago. And in most cities, there is some kind of school, a training center. But yeah, this is the same for Cleveland at the time. It might be better now. But it's like, maybe the trainer is going to show up. Maybe you'll have a couple people to work with. Maybe the trainer is just going to want to talk for two hours about how he never made it. And yeah, like, yeah. Like, dude. Like, you should hear uh, which, uh, yeah. uh, Kevin Owens talk about uh, uh, Jacques Rougeau. Looking at, oh, <laughs> looking sure. at, yeah. So I would, like, I would go there like, just <laughs> after my day job, go show up at like 9 or 10 at night, ready to train. And then have the guy be an hour late and then just be like, well, we're not really going to take bumps today because you don't need to. I'm like, yeah, I do need to. I need yes, to learn how to yes, do Maybe yes. you don't need to, but I, yeah. I need to learn but how to I do I need this. to learn all of this stuff. I need, to, I, know, I need to know how to tuck my chin. I need to know how to tuck my chin. So I used to, Ray Rowe, who's in the Viking, uh, whatever. The, the Viking experience. What's, they changed their is, name, Isn't right? that amazing? That's an amazingly terrible name. Well, so he was from Cleveland. He was, uh, Nick and I used to see him wrestle all the time. He was like my age, but... In high school, still on the Cleveland, uh, Cleveland like, All-Pro shows. Yeah, he's Jack now. Yeah. So I was pretty good buddies with him, and I said, dude, can I just get, like, the key to where the ring is, and can Nick and I just go up there? So he trusted me, gave me the key, 
And Nick and I, when he was off, so it would be like on a Wednesday, he would be in Cleveland off of work. We would go there to the Fantasy Nightclub, which was PH Fantasy, Ooh. unlock the place. I think it was pretty haunted. I don't know what your feelings are on ghosts, but this place was like <laughs> so spooky, man. And we would go, to, he would teach me how to hit the ropes, how to lock up, how to do simple old chain wrestling, how to take bumps, blah, blah, blah. And then when he was not around, he the spirit squad picked up, he started to get really busy. So I would just go in there alone and run the ropes and take bump, flat back bumps. And like, I would stand up sometimes and be like, did I just see something move somewhere? It was this giant, like old timey, <laughs> I think it, it's probably a hundred years old. It's, it's the bands come and play there and they have wrestling shows, but it was so spooky at night. Mm-hmm. And I would hear people walking up the stairs or like running up the stairs. And the, if I heard it twice in a night, I would say, all right, I'm out of here. I'm done. I'm done. And the light switch was very far from the door. <laughs> so you had to hit this big switch off and then just run in pitch darkness <laughs> till you got to the front door, then lock it. <laughs> And I went through that for like a few months and eventually one of the, I don't know if it was Ray Row or somebody else. They're like, Hey, you know, that place is haunted, right? And I was like, I fu- I knew I it. I fucking I knew, knew it. it. <laughs> and again, I don't know if your listeners or if you feel one way or the other, but that was, that was a pretty spooky place, man. Yeah. Yeah. It, it gotcha. So, Why am I talking so about you were, you were doing a, you were doing wrestling and then also like comedy. That's, that's, right, what, that's yeah. how we kind of like got into this. So I made the move to, eventually it was like, I either had to go to Lance Storm in Canada or go to OVW with Rip Rogers and Cornette mm-hmm. and like learn, I can't like jerk around anymore it's got to like there has to be an actual yeah, regiment yeah. yeah 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 so very suddenly i just uh moved so i think i sold my car sold something just took a plane ride to louisville and was like i'm just gonna live here and i think i ended up buying a car from a an olive garden server nice i was just crashing with my friends friend of a friend this girl and guy couple who were just like yeah you can live with us sure Sounds kinky. It was uh, it was not kinky, yeah, yeah. but they were cool. <laughs> Nick and Michelle, they were great. Um, and then yeah, you, you kind of just started w- training you, at you OBW. Full on doing it. I went full in. Yeah, I did the beginners class along with Rip's advanced class. So I was in training like four or five days a week, and we had TV on Wednesdays. We had house shows Friday and Saturday, and this is all unpaid, just learning. What to year wrestle. was this? This was. 2009 and 10 i think gotcha Mm -hmm. so i was wrestling every single day except sunday i was doing a personal training day job that started at 5 a.m my choice just because i wanted it done early so i can just spend the rest of my whole life was wrestling and tanning and lifting weights that was it (laughs) yeah and it was all not you know for free and I, I was got, gonna say, are you getting paid at all for any no, of this? No, yeah, they're even yeah. O, that's yeah, way a lot of because you're doing OVW at this doing, point. Yeah, and okay, I was on and, TV. They made me Rookie of the Year, Tag Team Champ. Like I was. Yeah, but like, were you weren't even getting like twenty five bucks? No, no. In fact, I was. They expect you to bring audience members, so you have to go around and like try to <laughs> call your friends in. So I had your a pretty good in. scheme. I would give away free workouts to my clients if they came to my shows. Oh wow! Geez. So I would be like, "Look, I have a." Big. So now you're making less money. <laughs> As even yeah, but to me it was all like, "You just this doesn't matter. You don't want to live at OVW. This is like a stepping stone to get hired." Well, no, of course. I mean, that's where freaking Lesnar, and yeah, Batista, Cena, Orton, and, and Sh- Benjamin, uh, Orton, Sean Benjamin, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that whole class, yeah. I could understand some of the guys there who've been there for five or six years or seven years, being like, "This is just you know." They would go through their crisis every six months of. I don't need. I don't need, need this anymore. I yeah. can be making money. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> but I was like, I do not want to get to that point. So I, I said in my mind, one year maximum. If I'm not hired by then, I'll go somewhere else. At some point, yeah. something will happen. And then what happened? What happened after a year? Well, after six months, I got hired. So <laughs> there you go. There you go. The time, there yeah. you go. So then I went to Florida, wrestled in FCW, which later became NXT. Mm-hmm. Life was sweet. I loved it. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, you got, you called up to the main roster at one point, didn't you? Didn't you wrestle for the E for a second? Uh, I was only on NXT. I never for a cup of coffee. No, 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 no. No, you just did the NXT stuff. I was all NXT through and through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> through, through yeah, yeah. Which it was nice to be on this. It was a, kind of a slightly easier schedule than OVW, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But I was getting paid, so it was nice. It was nice well, to be paid to wrestle. Listen, I love the fact that they have a facility down there, and like, look, the WWE needs a Hall of Fame, and they have actually a lot of land. It's like mm-hmm. just. Put it down there in Florida. People are already going to freaking SeaWorld. You know? They're already going to SeaWorld. Yeah, they're yeah. already going to Disney and all that. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, like they have all of this stuff. They have warehouses full of all of like these old belts. I thought that and... was the plan was to make. Is yeah, that... you'd think that, wouldn't you? But well, like... they're getting rid of the Stanford offices, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the Titan Tower at least. Titan Tower. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still staying in Stanford, but okay, they're I didn't they're, know that. they're moving over to like yeah yeah they're consolidating because they have like th- like four facilities up there uh, in Connecticut. 
And so it's like, yeah, why don't you? They have warehouses full of just merch and tapes. Doinks. And, a lot and of doink do- the clowns. Lots of doinks. <laughs> you know, yeah. Just waiting to be, have the no, flip listen, the, the, switch. I, you could make a museum out of just that. I, I'm surprised they haven't done that yet down oh, there That's got to be in the works. I know, right? Because they, they also own a bunch of that land down there, too. So just, just do it. Look, yeah, just make a... Because, I mean, like, look, Cooperstown, you know, mm-hmm. is in New York. It's like, yeah, that's where the Baseball Hall of Fame is. Like, people actually will go out of their way. I mean... Where, where, where the people... fuck is Cooperstown? But people go to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah people go to a WWE. And no matter Fiscal where you put the, the WrestleMania events, people come from all over the planet. Like, that's that's the, what I'm their, saying. Their year vacation is to go to WrestleMania. Exactly. Yeah. They have all these old belts. They, have, you know, yeah. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you go out of your way to go see the European Championship? I mean, come on. I would. <laughs> yeah. I no. want to go see a, a wax. Uh, Ken Shamrock. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Yeah. And, then, and then think, oh my god, it looks. I thought it was him for a second. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, oh. Well, because yeah, he looks like a wax figure of himself lately. To be honest, <laughs> he, I saw him. He's badass. He like, put an yeah, ankle lock I, Honestly, on, yeah, uh, Ken Shamrock. I apologize. Please don't come after dude, he's me. He's gonna kick your door in right now. Yeah, no, no fucking shit. That's why I, I, I really I caught him, myself. He had know? an ankle lock on uh, PJ Black. I just saw that on Instagram and I thought, oh my god, <laughs> he's, gonna, he's gonna kill you. He's, he's gonna, gonna he's fucking gonna kill break you. Break your leg, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um. So you are the reason why you even text me mm-hmm. was you're working on a on a flick. Always because I need something. I only come to you when I need something. One of yeah, those exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it works for me. But you know, you're working on a flick. Yes. Uh, um. Yes, and you're doing a crowdfunding thing. This is not going to air for another like three weeks, so it'll probably be up. Oh, by perfect. Then. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, exactly. guys, click the link right now. Yeah, exactly. Honestly, we'll, we'll put it in a little <laughs> description, and then it'll be like on the uh, and annotations, and the whole kind of works. So yeah, t- tell me about it. Cause I did watch the 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 video thing. Cool. Uh, um. Thanks for checking it out. Yeah, so, well, that was about it. I got about halfway through it. Yeah, that's I was right. like, yeah, yeah. no, no. Uh, um, but yeah, no. Uh, tell tell us about it, because like, yeah, it's go ahead, I, give, give it to us. Um, I have a, a little bit of experience uh, in the film world. I just got my toes wet last year. I got into a an international film fest with a short I made with my brother. It was comedy. Uh, it was kind of like a glorified sketch. If we're being honest, it was a longer, fancier looking sketch. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. But yeah, I got you. Yeah. You know, we yeah. got into the shorts program of the 42nd annual Cleveland International Film Fest. No big deal. Well, you love in Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. Love yeah. Cleveland. Yeah, yeah, loving it. Uh, so that was pretty cool. And it motivated me to keep doing this kind of thing. And I thought I'd like to branch out of comedy into something that's kind of like, you have in life things that just like burn in your brain or your soul or whatever you want to call it again i don't know if you guys believe in ghosts and all that i'll leave that to, <laughs> yeah. you know. going back to the ghosts <laughs> but it was not a thing of like i want to force myself to make something it was like well this is just like dying to get out you know that that kind of idea yeah it's, it's a story you wanted to tell yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and i kind of did the thing where i refused to write it down for a few months and just let it like marinate in your brain for a while mm-hmm. and i took a crack at it and after a few drafts I thought, I think I really need to make this. And I think this could be... So it's called what? Heal? It's called Heal. Yeah. G- g- give, give, us, give me a little... Sure. Give me a little something. Give me, give me, give me a pitch. So we have... Uh, we're in the indie wrestling world. And there's a guy named Mason who is an up-and-coming wrestler. And he... I have to be very careful to not spoil what's happening in this thing, but I want to get excited. No, but also, no, but give, give it to us. Yeah. I, I'll say even the video is a little vague. Sure, I, I yeah. Want, I want a little more meat. You know, yeah. This guy is uh, surprised with an offer to work for the biggest wrestling company in the world. It's unnamed, so leave that to your imagination. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just make it up, guys. Sure, whatever you, if you can ever imagine a company, it would call someone and say, hey, we want to hire you. Yeah, Who, yeah. who would that the be? The biggest wrestling company in the world. Go on. It could be any, yeah, could any be one anything. Of them. Could yeah. be anything. Could be anything. And so he's left with this, uh, like, three-week deadly. They have to move here in three weeks, wherever there is. And, yeah, it's definitely uh, not Connecticut or anything like no, that. No, it's Florida. Yeah. <laughs> not, not Florida, not Connecticut. Yeah. <laughs> it's Cooperstown. Yeah, it's Cooperstown, New York. And basically, it's a, you'd, uh, don't get in trouble for three weeks. Just behave yourself. We'll see you in three weeks, and your life's going to be changed. Your dream comes true. Cool. Great. Sounds easy enough. And it's not easy enough for our protagonist, Mason. Um, he decides to keep working the remaining dates he has on the Indies, which he's allowed to do. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's what other companies do. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, the the two major themes that it deals with are addiction and sexual assault. And there's a blurring. So is he, is, 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 is he a drug addict that gets sexually assaulted? I can't. These are the details I want to leave. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. You with, I know, I, I know. Because I, I, when I saw the, the, the pitch thing, I, yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. I was like, 
Oh, I was like I wanted to, I wanted to know a little bit more. Well, I could say a little bit more is something I haven't really mentioned in in the uh, the package. Where we'll tell you now, there's this very clear blurring of the lines between what's real and what's not real, meaning what's happening in the ring and what's happening outside Sound, of the ring. Sounds K-fabulous. K-fabulous. So there's this, you know, he, we see him get told a few times throughout the, the uh, film, it's not real, this isn't real. And to him, it is a little bit real. Yeah. And we see what happens in a wrestling match if somebody does treat it real and the other person doesn't. You yeah, know? I mean, some, some dudes, it it's feels tricky. that way, though. Yeah. It, it feels like they they buy into their own thing. Like, yeah, yeah. They, yeah so... they, they work themselves into a shoot. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> That's the, oh, man, that Hulk Hogan tweet is so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Jabroni marks working themselves into a shoot. Into a they shoot. Don't know. Oh, my God. <laughs> so it's, uh, it deals with these sensitive topics that they're, they're prevalent in wrestling. They're out there. They're happening. And nobody wants to think about it. You just, they just want to think about, like, oh, how's this guy's work rate or this spot, this uh, mm-hmm. viral gif or whatever. I mean, there's a dark side to it, so I'm exploring that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you have experience, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on the darker side. The dark things. side. It's like the yeah. Twilight Zone meets mm-hmm. Fight Club. Uh, well, so we're doing a crowdfund for it. and I Yeah, think I was going to say, be, where is it? Tell people. It's going to be on Seed and Spark, hopefully. I mean, I think it will be. I'm working with them to get back and forth to you know, to meet their standards of what they want a campaign to be. But they're a crowdfunding site that is, by the numbers, more successful than the rest of them, which I like. Nice. And they were founded with this message of inclusiveness and uh, diversity, which I also like. So we've made a pledge to have at least 80% of our crew behind the camera be women or people of color, which I'm all for. I think that's great. Yeah, okay. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I am neither of those things. Yes, I was going to say, <laughs> you, are, you are so white bread. You know but <laughs> my, uh, my amazing director, Maggie Levin, is uh, one of those things. She's she seems a, very sweet. She's awesome. And the stuff she makes is so freaking cool looking and compelling. So I asked her originally, I was like, oh, I was going to ask her. And then my lady friend was like, you know, she just got this big job. She's not going to have time for any of this. And I was like, oh, man, that's exactly who I wanted. So I, I reached out and said, Maggie, I know you're going to be very busy with your thing. However. Have, yeah, mm, but would you at least just take a look at this? And she goes, sure. Yeah, I always like reading scripts. And then she was like, we need to meet like tomorrow or whatever. And we met and she goes, I want to. No matter what, we have to do this. This will be the, I said I was not going to make any more shorts. This will be the one, the last one. I'm like, nice. fuck yeah. And uh, is it long form or short form? It is short. It's going to be hopefully around 15, 20 minutes, something like that. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't sure if it was a feature mm-hmm. or not. You know, yeah. So we're trying to try to submit it to the short programs, shorts programs of a lot of film fests, hopefully. Mm-hmm. This is assuming again. I'm, I'm really hoping. I think we're going to reach our goal. Yeah, exactly. Every, everybody put put some money in there. Kick know. some money. We have, uh, we have, I'll, 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 I'll make Breckenmeyer put six dollars into yeah, it. Six yeah, six bucks. Yeah, that's from right. Breckenmeyer. Yeah, Breckenmeyer. So we have cool incentives <laughs> for people who who join the team or who back it. Uh, the the smallest contributions you'll get exclusive email updates of what's going on, pictures and videos up. The next one up is like special thanks in the credits. Cool. Top one is you're literally a producer in IMDb of the film. IMDb. Film, yeah, I saw that. I saw exciting. That. I want that. That's the one oh, yeah. I'm going for. Yeah, you know, it's really hard. You know, like, I, explain to me how do you get on IMDb? Uh, <laughs> you have to contribute to my film. Oh, there I've you go. There, there it is. There <laughs> it is. All right, cool. Way, yeah. That's how I get on IMDb. But there we have, uh, <laughs> what else? Downstate, the band that did a lot of music for WWE, is contributing a song to us, an original track. They did. Ms. Ziggler, Zack Ryder, they did the All In theme song. They oh, are, they did Ziggler's? They did Ziggler's, yeah. Hello, and welcome to Meditation Minute. I'm your guide, Louis Prada. I'm recording this from within my bedroom closet because there is a man in my home. I am scared, guys. This is the perfect opportunity to show you how to guide yourself back to your emotional center even when you feel like you're going to be killed by a drug addict. I do not have a gun. What I do have, though, are my meditation techniques and this novelty sword with a hilt shaped like a dragon I picked up at a comic convention eight years ago. So close your eyes and join me as I relax beside an imaginary lake far away from the threat of an armed man who smells heavily of what I hope is his own urine. When the piss man infiltrates your imagination and tries to rob you by the 
fake serene lake, push the thoughts aside. Focus not on the situation at hand, but on how you'll leave the piss man alive just long enough to admit that he shouldn't have messed with the Grand Master of the Dragon Blade. Wait. He's in the bedroom. I have to do something. I, I have to show him that I am the master of the Dragon Blade. Unguard, scum! Hi! Oh, oh, God. Oh, hey, man. Sorry about your sword there. These things weren't made for combat, but, uh... I like the dragon on the hilt there. Can I have it? Sure, just just take it. Thank you. I'll be taking your TV as well. It's been a pleasure robbing you. Oh, and sorry about the piss. You know how it is. <laughs> anyway, see you next week. Ah, I'm just kidding. I got everything I needed. Later. Well, uh, I hope this guided meditation has brought you the serenity you seek. Fuck a lot of good it did me. But anyway, I'm Louis Prada, and this has been Meditation Minute. Namaste. Did Ziggler ask about me? S yes. Yeah, he did? Yeah, every time we talk, he asks about you. Really? And no matter what's going on with our family, whether good, bad, tragic, exciting, whatever, it's always like, how's Mac? How, how's Macaulay Hogan doing? So sometimes when I'm texting you, it's because I need the information. Yeah. What's I'm going like, on? I'm fine. Thank you. He's fine. Yeah. yeah Mac says he's fine. <laughs> I'm going to text Ryback right now. Yeah, text Ryback. So yeah, Ry Ryback has an issue with me, apparently. He doesn't have an issue. He just wants to talk no, chat no, with No, no, no. He has an issue with me. <laughs> And, um, yeah, I have an issue with him. I think we have bones to pick. Me, me and Ryback. Yeah. And, uh, okay, seriously, I'm, I'm standing up right now. Do you think I can take him? Yeah. If you put that Nemeth Bro shirt on, you can take him. Definitely. All right, so if I put on your T-shirt, you think that like, I'll, I, could, I could take Ryback? I, th I th definitely, yeah. Right. There's no th think about it, I know. Yeah, okay, cool. And I can tell he's weak spots. I know where he's had injuries. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, there you go. I, uh, I, uh, I do that to my girlfriend all the time. I know all of her, all you know, all her soft injuries. spots. <laughs> <laughs> Just you do to Ryback what you would do to your girlfriend, and I think you'll be all right. Yeah. Exactly <laughs> the same thing. I'll massage you just the exact same <laughs> way. <laughs> you hear that, Ryback? Oh, man. I just... <laughs> Oh, he's texting. I see. I see the three dots popping. Okay. Up. Yeah. No. Honestly, cause I'm, I'm putting on the shirt now just so I could fuck him up. And also, now we look matchy matchy. It's really cute. Uh, we're, we're the we're, same. We're, dude, we yeah. are wearing the exact same t-shirt right now. We're, and it's we're not twinskies. It's not two of the same. It's one. We're both squeezed into it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I call left. Man, he must be typing a lot, or maybe he's doing a voice thing. He loves doing audio things. Oh yeah. No. Honestly, we could put him on speakerphone for like like you know like three to five minutes if he wants to do it. You know, yeah. I mean, the audio quality would be terrible, but you know, yeah. Well, it would be pretty bad. Yeah, I'll just, I'll hold a mic up to to the phone. <laughs> what would that sound like? That would just cause mess feedback. Stuff? I, I have no idea. There's no way I, to I, know. I, I've never done it before, so you know, yeah. We could always just cut it out. <laughs> but, oh, uh, that's true. It yeah, could, it could. No, just I know. Have yeah, it's a, it's a fucking miracle of podcasting. This dot 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 is just not going. Look at away. that. He's just he's just going. It's isn't he? and, the, and the audio thing was three minutes long. The last one I got from him. Oh, jeez. And now it's gone. There's nothing. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. He's still he's still typing. I don't know. Ryback is still typing at us. This is exciting for your listeners just to hear uh, wait, well, about Ryback's. You know, it's message. funny. Uh, we have an episode coming out this week, and uh, we have a magician on. <laughs> and oh. There's nothing nothing better for for listeners than magic. And to hear you just go, "Wow, that was cool." Too bad that you was, didn't see. That it. was amazing. You couldn't <laughs> see a freaking thing. <laughs> like, you know, but oh my god, who's the magician? Uh, um, it was uh, my buddy uh, uh, Andy uh, Deemer. Cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he works for the site. He actually does a lot of our uh, awesome. analytics and does all that kind of stuff. But also, he just got into the Magic Castle like, in the last like, week or so. Congratulations, uh, yeah, Gamer. Yeah. And so we did that thing at uh, uh, Saved by the Max. You know, that oh, thing? yeah. Yeah, so we did the thing where it was a nostalgia episode. And so we had him, and he was our quote-unquote Max. <laughs> uh, he did some magic for us. And then guess who showed up? The real Max. No El way. El Alfonso. Wow. Okay. Yeah, or Alonzo. Did yeah. he pull him out of a hat? Yeah, no, they called him. Apparently, he's friendly. More dust. Yeah, oh, he's still he nothing for Ryback. <laughs> stupid Ryback. This way. Well, I mean, he's doing his podcast now, and I know he's doing a supplements thing, right? It says, please play this. It's a one minute and 58 okay. second long thing. All right, here. here. I'm going to hold this up to the mic. We'll probably cut this out, but let's see. Let's see, <laughs> let's see what Ryback has to say to us. Let me turn up the volume. Yeah, crank right it up. up. Yeah, I'm going to crank. I'm going to crank up this volume. See how it goes. Hey, Macaulay, it's the big guy Ryback. <laughs> Anyways, really would like to have you on the show sometime. 
I won't talk to you about Home Alone. I know you're probably sick of and fucking tired of talking about fucking Home Alone all the time. So I won't be bringing Home Alone up on the podcast. Unless you don't like me and you agree to do this show, then I'll probably just center the whole interview around Home Alone and the Wet Bandits uh, and that whole fucking uh, charade of... Uh, just great fucking times that I'm sure you're this just like probably fucking thing. tickled pink to talk about again with me. Um, if not, we could talk about wrestling and talk about uh, out. life and, and whatever the fuck muscles. else we should talk about, muscles. talk about muscles. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm a pretty open guy and uh, you know, I know you, you enjoy wrestling so there's no doubt in my goddamn mind that you fucking love me. Um, I can tell you're a big Ooh. powerhouse wrestler fan and um, my sister I is a huge it. fan of Home Alone and she wants me to go to my <laughs> He's like, I don't want to talk about Home Alone, but, but let's, let's, talk let's talk about it. And uh, conduct the interview on that. But uh, I, I run things a little more professionally than what my sister would. There's a reason why she's not famous, and I am. <laughs> tell me, but, tell me uh, more about your sister. That, or what, I, love I should it. say. Uh, you know, just, just hanging on these days, Macaulay, just fucking hanging on, fucking selling natural supplements, and, you know. <laughs> but anyways... We'd love to have you on. I think it would be a really good conversation. We could talk about a lot of things. Plug the podcast. And uh, I hopefully, you know. Uh, he's just giving me that selling the himself. So the ball's in I your fucking it. court, though, man. The ball's in your court. And uh, I don't want to. <laughs> right back to balls are in my like court. <laughs> you or anything of that nature. I just want us to come fucking a simple conversation, you know, about a little wrestling, about a little life. And, uh, you know, if the wet bandits happen to come, come up. On. Yeah, <laughs> See, yeah, yeah, come on. You know, maybe. Maybe. You promise. Leave it at that. <laughs> Wow. Thank you, Ryback. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, no, I, I'd love to have him on my show. And uh, sure, I, I can do a, a little tit for tat. You know, I'll do his. He does mine kind of thing. Because you're going to have to fight. I know. Yeah. I, I get, like, again, I could probably take him if I'm wearing this shirt. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, what if he grabs you so hard he rips it off you? <laughs> I doubt that would happen. He won't, he won't put a hand on me. I had to do something like that when I was getting picked on as a child. You did like that. You ripped a shirt. There was a kid that was held back a year, and he was a grade older, so he's two years older than me. He grabbed me by my shirt and held me up against a fence, like with I guess like this. It must have been. Oh, I thought that only happens in movies. This happened in real life. I was yeah. being held up like in the air, and his friends were all there, and then mine were there. My friends were doing nothing. They were just sitting there going, "Sorry, dude. It's like I'm about to get knocked mm-hmm. out. Thanks, thanks, Tom Beckner and Chris Hart. That's <laughs> yeah, shit. Fuck you guys. So he reached back with one hand still. This is how strong he was. He held me up with one arm against the fence. Oh, reached geez. back to knock me out. And as he did that, I was thinking, this only works in cartoons, but I'm going to try it. And if it works, I'm good. And if it doesn't work... You do that try running thing where you jump out of your shoes? I tried <laughs> close. I tried to just squ- shrink down and slide out of my own shirt. And, that's, and it worked? I don't know how this worked. It fucking worked. I got out. I, I slunk. I shrinked out of my shirt, and he was still holding the shirt against the wall. He stumbled a little bit, and I just booked it, man. I ran all the way to Chris Hart's house. Look at him. I took off with no shirt on back to Chris Hart's mom's house, and they ran behind me. And I just I didn't stop running because I thought, this guy's going to catch me. He's on rollerblades. Mm-hmm. He was a rollerblade goon. <laughs> a rollerblade goon. He was a goon. <laughs> I know. I would love to imagine him still holding your shirt. Still right now. Yeah, yeah, just like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of, 13 with years his later. Cock, kind of, yep. And kind of go, just like looking left and right. Going, oh. Where'd he go? <laughs> <laughs> where, where could he possibly be? He was just here. I can't believe that worked. I'm so glad because I don't want to get punched in the face as a 13 year old. I was going to say, you're 13. Like, uh, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, so you, you, were, you were a lover, not a fighter. So you went into wrestling. I was just trying to have a good time. <laughs> yeah, I was skateboarding with my friends. And uh, you're still working now, right? I mean, you still do like some indies and things. I, like that. I saw yeah, you at bar yeah. wrestling. That's I think one of the last times we I, saw each other. Since then, have started this uh, charity-based promotion called Nuclear Heat Wrestling. We would do. <laughs> yeah. We uh, you should call it Xbox Heat. Xbox, Xbox Heat wrestling. wrestling. We pioneered uh, Wednesday night wrestling in Los Angeles, which was pretty cool. And every show, we would pick a different charity or or organization that we liked and give all the money. So it was kind of like asking friends of mine to do a show and to get paid a little bit but most of the money going towards yeah what, what kind of charities do you uh, uh the do first you? one was dogs without borders 
Nice. Which helps dogs all over all over the world actually be homed. Dogsters without borders. Dogsters without borders. <laughs> yeah. Dogsters. <laughs> and then we did my refuge house, which uh, helps former or not. I guess how would you, how would I word this the right way? Victims of sex trafficking rehabilitate their lives and start over. Oh, it's hilarious. So. <laughs> uh, they were good they were great i loved that was probably the most fun show and we did one for cats the la cat club so they kind of like dogs Love well, you, you were saying you don't have any pets i don't have any pets here but you do all these things with the pet I, I like to be around animals i love animals yeah i know i have a shit ton of animals here and so many nice i know animals. i know and you, you you like them and everything i really like them a lot yeah. yeah but you don't have any pets the place i live forbids it because the floors are fancy wood Okay, but I know that people in my place have pets because I see them and I play with them. I know my my brother had one of those situations. So what do, do I? Am I going to be the one person who gets busted? That's what I always think. Yeah, yeah. You don't make it worse for everyone else, you know. But uh, uh, I love I love dogs, man. Yeah, yeah. No, me too. Actually, I I, I kind of missed having dogs, so now having a panda over here. Like Panda's she's, pretty funny. He's, she's she, gr- she's great. She actually like yeah, actually she needs a walk pretty soon. But uh otherwise like looks yeah. like she just needs she doesn't want to go on a walk. Right? I know, I know. She she is so simple. It it's funny. When we first met, she immediately took a liking to me. And Whoa. Bre- and Brenda was telling me like she was like she doesn't like anybody. That's like, awesome. You know, I mean at least like you know like she likes people. She's friendly. But I like, like the way you put that when we first met cuz some people don't treat they don't. They won't describe it that way. Yeah, yeah. I saw this dog. Psh, you met. Yeah, exactly. No, no, and no. Now, like she, like loves me. Like it, it's. Uh, she's my dog now, and she's like nine years old. Like you know, like Brendan nice. already had her for about like eight years before we would even met. You, you know? can't, you can't fight nature, man. I know, I know. And so, like, yeah, now, now she's like my number two in this house. You know, she's the sheriff. She, she, she keeps the cats in order, especially that that she one. Keeps the cats in order. Like, yeah, good. look at that one like, with the, all of his stripes. Oh, I thought that was a pillow this whole time. That I mean, is, a, that is another no, animal. That, that's a, that's a cat. Oh that's my a, god, I know. It looks like a goddamn pillow. Oh, yeah. so he's not up there anymore. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he, he moves around. You know. Do you know what a an Alaskan Kleekai is? Mm-mm. It's it's like a husky that's shrunk down. It's the size of your dog, but like husky. Oh wow! Black and white and gray and blue mm-hmm. eyes. The blue eyes. Oh. Jeff Tremaine, the guy from Jackass and the Dirt and all that, he he has one of those. And I'll go over there, and that dog does not like anybody at all. Mm-hmm. Loves me. It's kind of similar to what you're describing with Panda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so his wife will be like, "Oh, if it isn't Kona's best friend." Yeah. <laughs> what do you do that he likes? And like, I, I don't know. Uh, Don't make me feel guilty about it. <laughs> I went to dinner with her, uh, with uh, Brenda's family, and um, they're like, "Oh, you know, how, how do you get Panda to love you so much? You know, because she's kind of a little bit distant kind of thing. She's affectionate, but she's distant. Oh, and, like Dean Ambrose, yes, affectionate like, like, but distant. Yeah, distant. She's the <laughs> Dean Ambrose of dogs. Yeah. And uh, um, I said, like, well, listen, I said, like, you know, like, I, I don't know. She just took a liking to me, but also I carry a treat around in my pocket all the time. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. And I was like, yeah. Cause it's like, that movie is as good as it gets. Yep. Like, you know, he always carries bacon in a, in a, in a, in a, in a Ziploc bag. My mom does that with dog treats. She always well, has it in her And bodies. so we were at, like, a dinner. It was, like, a birthday dinner. And they said, like, oh, like, yeah. I said, yeah, I carry treats. I'm like, Really? I go, yeah. And I reach into my pocket and I pull out a fucking dog treat. Even though the dog isn't at dinner. <laughs> like, I'm just like, yeah, no. I carry around a dog treat all the freaking time. You know, yeah. So that's how I won her over, over there. But no, she, she, like, yeah, no, she warmed to me super, super fast. I mean, were you like a, like a dog person, like growing up? Oh, yeah. where, where, where are you from? Cleveland. Cleveland. Oh, oh, you're so, uh, that's yeah. why you keep on bringing up Cleveland. There you go. You're an Ohio <laughs> yeah, boy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I knew, I knew I knew that, but I forgot it. So, you know, yeah. it's a, Non-substantial, fa- crucial fact. Well, yeah. Well, but I do I mean, love Cleveland. Yeah, well, you... I'll be very clear about this. You met Stuart P. Miller from Columbus, Ohio. That's right. Yeah, yeah, Stuart yeah, P. Miller. Yeah, yeah. So he's another Ohioan and friend, mm-hmm. friend of the show. <laughs> Hell yeah. Stu. Yeah. And How so did he, he do in the Scotland games? Or the Highland games? Oy. Bad, bad topic? Not, not good, not good. Uh, well, it just, like, you know, yeah. I, I, I think they have divisions, and I think he even took, like, kind of, like, the, the lower division. And I, I've seen the video. It's, like, yeah, it's that thing where you kind of, like, throw a, like, you know, a the big, tree. The timber thing or whatever. Yeah, uh, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, you know, he didn't do great. I mean, he didn't embarrass himself, but, like, he could get the tree over and things like that. So, well, yeah. maybe he broke the ice, and now he trains harder and goes that, back. You just that, gotta, you gotta do it once. Yeah, he, exactly. He's literally never done it before ever. He needs right? a training montage, I think, is what it is. Montage. Yeah, fuck motherfucker yeah. montage. Get this man a montage. Yeah, I think Stat. he he needs a montage, and then, uh, um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I saw some of the raw video of it, and it's like, yeah, it's pretty hilarious. Um, growing up, um, 
I'm gonna go back to wrestling just because right. I like talking about wrestling. Sure. Uh, um, did, like, were you a wrestling fan? Were you I love, your yeah. family? Like, yeah, you know, we used to go to the shows all the time. Yeah. My dad was a teamster, and somehow through that, he used oh. to get tickets for Raw and SmackDown and the house shows. And stuff. I, I was I'm an honorary teamster in oh, Chicago. Oh, congrats! That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I got a jacket and everything. They gave me a windbreaker. Damn, those windbreakers are cool. I know they're fucking dope. Mine's Very green. Cool. Yeah. I it's, used to really enjoy his Union Hall Christmas parties a lot as a child. Santa would be there. That's the only time I would see Santa all year. Was at the team. <laughs> Christmas party. <laughs> I love that. The Teamster Santa. And then they would have big candy canes filled with M&M. So it was a plastic shaped candy cane. I think they probably still have that for kids, right? And it's, you just have a brother or you have a sister also? I think uh, you two brothers, older and younger. Oh, gotcha. That gotcha. would be the time where I would have to say one of them is my sister and tease them, but we're not, nice. you know, it's just an instinct. No, 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 like, no. Let's go public with this. Yeah, I have a sister. Her name is Dolph Ziggler. She's on <laughs> nice. WWE Wrestling. Nice. Got, got got the uh, got the Kurt Henning hair. What Kurt Henning hair? Actually, he's been straightening it lately, and it looks terrible. Yeah, I don't I, know. honestly, Dolph, listen up. Honestly, don't straighten the hair. None I of swear. It's, my mom hates it. Honestly, me too. And it, it's obvious, and it's it's not a good look. So I'm gonna I throw that out to your brother. The best Dolph hair was He Man length when it was just like hair and bleach white. Yeah, and that was, go, was the best. Go for it. Go for it. Go for the, the go for the kind of the, I don't the like frizz. This, this go long... for the go for the curls. Yeah, yeah. Like don't fight it. You know, just or just cut your hair, but don't. That flattening thing. Oi, man. I, don't do it. Don't do it. We just went to the premiere. It makes me cry. <laughs> it makes Matt cry. Yeah, you ruined Christmas, Dolph Ziggler. All right? Because That's how bad it was. Like, my hair? Yes. <laughs> yes, your hair ruined Christmas. Okay? <laughs> but, uh, um, but yeah, so you went to... Who was your like, favorite set growing up? My favorite... I had a pretty lame favorite at one point. This was when I before I actually was super into it. And I was just passing, watching and passing... <laughs> I thought the Repo Man was so cool. Oh my God, Barry Darcel! <laughs> yeah, I thought yeah. he was the man. Oh my God! Because <laughs> if you're a child, you're watching wrestling not for maneuvers and technical whatever. You're just saying, I just saw a guy with a little bandit thing and a big hook on a chain. That was cool to me. <laughs> for the same reason, I got into Jake Roberts so, later. That, that, he has a, this guy's a giant snake. Cool, great. <laughs> yeah, that, in, you know? that's Boys Club. That's an OSW review. Like you know, like yeah, <laughs> that, that's a reference over there. Like yeah, that is such a Boys Club pick, <laughs> Repo Man. <laughs> He was, uh, was he your gateway? I mean, who was your gateway guy? Uh, well, you know, as I learned to see like things that were cool and weren't cool, and what I, I, I at this point now, but who, who was like, what's your first thing that like got you into wrestling? Uh, probably Jake Rob, Jake the Snake, Macho yeah. Man, yeah. those kind of like, people. I was yeah. Ultimate Warrior for me. Looking at like, you know, yeah, Ultimate I saw Warrior his SummerSlam cool. match against uh, Hunky Tonk Man. They showed a replay oh, of it my during God. Like, Superstars, and I was like, I'm in. I said, Who the fuck is that guy? Looking at and I, I, I was so in. When I first moved to Florida, I got. Uh, really into watching Honky Tonk Man stuff because Sandow is so obsessed with him. His promos are fucking hilarious. They're so funny. And his matches, we would watch matches before he was Honky Tonk Man when, when he was just a, yeah, just yeah. developing the little hip shaking thing. Yeah, like, like Stampede kind of era. And then we got like super, we would watch everything that we could find on him. This is before the network existed. So we were just on YouTube looking at matches. And then event, and then so like... I'm this way. I don't know if you are. I'll go back and watch something and forget how it ends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even that movie that Steve Carell did about amateur wrestling. Um, oh, uh, uh, f- oh, t- t- it's the after, uh, li- lions or uh, you know what I'm talking. God dang it! It's yeah, about yeah. the yes. So that's a story we all grew up knowing. If you were an amateur Fox, wrestler, Fox something Fox catcher, yeah. Fox catcher. There you go. A story that you definitely, if you've ever wrestled and you grew up wrestling in high school or grade school, you know that story, and it's like an unspoken, tragic, sad thing. I go into that movie forgetting that's what, it, what it's about, <laughs> and I'm just like, wow, that's very pretty interesting, and then that happens, and I'm like, oh my, that's right, I forgot. Oh, oh God. God, Jesus. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I didn't know the story of it until I saw the 30 for 30. Oh, man. I saw the 30 for 30 about Crazy, it, and then yeah. I watched Foxcatcher. Okay. Yeah, well, that's yeah. probably a good order of, way, uh, order of events. So I'm watching Honky Tonk Man's whole run. Forgetting all about Ultimate Warrior entirely. <laughs> <laughs> you forget that yeah, Ultimate Warrior is just going to go out and squash him so, in like 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah. I got because I'm like, damn, dude, no one can beat him. He has a, the longest streak. He's the champ, blah, blah, blah. And it was like heartbreaking for me to see Warrior come out and just kill him and instantly win new champ. And the place just going crazy because they just hated Honky Tonk so much. I, I loved when Santino Morella, when he won the Intercontinental <laughs> title, yeah, and yeah, he was yeah. like, bring out the Honkometer. Honkometer. Like, yeah. Oh, man. That's so good. <laughs> yep, yep. And they only did that for like two weeks. I like it a lot. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. No. So yeah, was, I get to I get to forget that and relive it. So that match, yeah. over and over. Yeah. But to me, it was like, oh man, I love Honky Tonk. But, but, but so you started watching what, what like 
what, in the late eighties, probably. Must have been the late eighties. Had to be late eighties. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, Jake was Jake was gone by then. And when does your memory really start? Because I'm, I what I can remember. Mine starts about five years old. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have some that's spider probably... memories before that, but like five years old, six years old. That's when I kind of like start kind of like be- yeah. becoming a human being. Essentially. So that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I would say my lifetime favorite wrestler ever is Kurt Angle. No question. Yeah, I mean, honestly, he had it all. Yep. I mean, he had the technique, he had the mic skills, he had the strength, the agility. Gold metal, real life gold medal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, he could shoot, like, you know, the whole thing. Okay, yeah. oh, I love an entire arena yelling, you suck. Yeah, I, know, I love when he was all his Hall of Fame speech. Oh, like, man. They're, 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 they're chanting, you suck, during his Hall of Fame thing, and he's loving it. You like, don't get that in the NFL. Great. You don't get that in baseball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, that, that, was a, that was a beautiful, that was a beautiful thing. I think, yeah, when you kind of, like, Let's say you're going to chart out everyone's kind of like things when it comes, like I said, strength, agility, technical skill, Very mic skill, Get a like milk truck, the whole thing, the milk truck, like, yeah, oi. Good guy or bad guy. That's what I mean. He could do heel face. He could do anything. When they brought back the new ECW, he was somehow the main dude on it, which yeah. was which so, so weird. weird, but perfect. Yeah. It was just so unexpected. Well, that's right before they dropped him, too, which is so crazy. Oh, man. I mean, yeah. he was still the most talented guy on the roster, but... You know, he had to get his shit together. Everyone know? was trying to think, like, who are they going to bring back from ECW that is leading this company? Oh, it's Kurt Angle. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, Hell yeah. He, he was in the audience once. Oh, and then, man. And then he was, <laughs> That's and, right. Yeah, he was in the audience once on an ECW show and then was told not to, like, yeah, don't put, don't show me in the audience. Oh, man. Because that was during the uh, Raven That's Crucifixion Crucifixion, angle. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he was a, you know, he was a very religious around that time. So he, I he, love the interview where he talks about that. It's so funny. Oh, yeah, yeah. What what is that on? Oh, it's probably in like the ECW. Yeah, thing. yeah, exactly. They, they which brought back ECW. Mm-hmm. Like that was the whole thing. Was that they did that that you know, the rise and fall of ECW. One night stand was pretty badass. The first one. Yeah. What was the second one? Oh, oh, the second one was that kind of like they did that uh, um, that uh, elimination chamber. And I don't really remember. And Lashley it. ended up winning the whole thing. Bobby Lashley, that's right. And then it was like, you know, yeah, it was, it was, uh, was, it was Johnny Nitro and Mercury versus the Hardy Boys. Like, oh, oh, I do remember that. Okay. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, it was a disaster. It was actually like, it was a shitty pay per view. And it was one of the lowest rated ones they ever did. First one was so good. It was so great. No, like, so yeah. fun. And also just like Bradshaw being a fucking dick up in, up in the mm-hmm. wings and stuff. And like, also you know, to see the people that you think of as. Like Balls Mahoney. Well, okay. Yeah, and I think in a lot of wrestling fans' minds, at least back then, it was like ECW sure was kind of wrestling, but like WWF and WWE is the yeah, was real the, yeah, thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So to see people that are the superhero actual wrestlers coming out of the shitty little or like entrance, mm-hmm. that was pretty cool. No, was, no, we got to see. Uh, oh, it was so a, great. Uh, I think it was Lance Storm versus Jericho. Actually, it was oh, Lance Storm's man. like last like televised match. Actually. Lance Storm's the man. Yeah, I, I mean, Lance you see, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, last time I saw him was on uh, the uh, Edge of Christian show. He was was refereeing something this week. Was he yes, refereeing uh, Impact? Impact. Yes, right. yeah, yeah. It was the the the, the uh, uh, what is, it was the Gage uh, Impact uh, match. Johnny Impact. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnny Impact. I like Lance Storm's. Strict way of life. He like, doesn't eat sweets. Yeah, maybe maybe some peanut butter sometimes. Like that. I, I'm just <laughs> fascinated by that. Well, why not? Don't you have a sweet tooth? Well, maybe I do, but I don't need it. Yeah, like, exactly. Whoa, is that yeah. just how easy it is? I, I yanked right. that tooth out a long time yeah. ago. <laughs> just so what a regiment. This yeah. guy's life. Yeah. No, uh, on the Edge and Christian show, it's funny. They make fun of him for being so, <laughs> like, strict. You know, like, uh, you know, just how humorless he is. Humorless, like, heavy know. reader, loves reading. It's, uh, I, I, actually, it was one of those things I liked that angle they did with him where it was, uh, um, let me be serious for a yeah. moment. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he said something, he was like, let me be serious for a moment. There's some story I was not around for. I'm sure my brother was, but Sandow tells it where he was the head coach or one of the head guys at OVW for a while. Mm-hmm. And he was very humorless and straightforward, but his wife like liked to bake for the the trainees. Mm-hmm. So he it was like, all right, we're going to do this. Then we have a show tomorrow night. Also, uh, here's some cookies. Th- there are some cookies <laughs> if you would like some cookies. Yeah, you know, like reluctantly, like having to, or maybe it was someone else's wife. 
Uh, <laughs> Brent Albright's wife has brought us brownies, so if you're someone who does that, enjoy it. You know? like, <laughs> if you're someone who does that, like who who could eat a pastry in front of Lance Storm? <laughs> exactly, because he's just full arms folded, like well, sugar. Huh? Yeah, 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 I definitely, yeah, definitely not judging you the entire <laughs> fucking time. We're gonna. Get... I remember the uh, Ultimate Warrior was actually like apparently he would go like through the catering thing mm-hmm. and he'd grab a cookie and he'd crush it up in his hand <laughs> and he would smell it. And then Smell throw it. it in the garbage. Oh god! Yeah, yeah. so got like, yeah, all these like fresh baked cookies, and like he was like, yeah, that was that was his dessert, was just smelling it because that's how much of a kind of a freak he was about his body. Yeah, but you see that video of the show that never happened with him training like high school kids to oh, be to god, work no, out. I, haven't. I can't describe it much beyond. It's just what it sounds like. It's in some street. He, he's, he's yelling, but, but it was a, was it done like as a pilot or is it just raw footage? It seemed like it was a pilot. And it's him just screaming at these kids, swearing, using all types of bad language to get them to do squats in like some alleyway somewhere. <laughs> the so old, the ultimate warrior yelling at kids. I yeah, love it. You see, it is be so sold. crazy. But he's like dressed like a normal guy. It's him though. I mean, obviously him. And he's just screaming at the kids. Are crying. He's just losing his mind. And I would, I only saw it way out of context, and I'm left wondering what was this for? Who wanted to see this? Like this was. Years after you were a wrestler, what is, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but right. no. who are these kids? No, I want to see the Ultimate Warrior yelling at children. If he was still alive today, I would buy that show. <laughs> also, why didn't it land, end up somewhere? I mean, I you know because I don't think it was ironical enough. Probably yeah. Yeah, I think now yeah, it would yeah. be fucking hilarious. <laughs> like a six-year-old Ultimate Warrior yelling at like high school kids. He like, kept yelling five more reps, bro. It was something like he wanted them to do do a squat, and in his words, it was something like taking a shit. <laughs> and he was just screaming like, "Get down and shit!" Or act like something like that. Well, was something he, crazy. He, he would make up words. He had vestrucity. Oh my that god, that was one of his words. Like yeah, and he was comic, which was kind of. I mean, he actually like. I think he like he does something where oh, he takes off Santa Santa Claus's clothes. You're going to die laughing. Are you going to bring me up again? Well, not <laughs> really Ryback. either. Not either of those. Probably. Yeah, Ryback. Yeah, uh, yeah. You can you can tell Ryback that we uh, that I played his stuff uh, on the show and that we may or may not use it. <laughs> we played. We played your recording on the show, and we may or may on not the use show. it. <laughs> <laughs> not, may cut it for time. Yes, exactly. May be cut for time. May be cut for time. <laughs> Mojo has a dark match. Uh. uh do you have CM Punk's phone number? No, I'm kidding. Okay. That'd be pretty good. <laughs> it's like, I like that one. But still. We played a recording on the show, maybe cut for time, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and your biggest fan, CM Punk. Do you have, a, do you have his number? <laughs> uh, I don't think I do. I don't. No, I'm, I'm talking about Ryback. Oh, that's Ryback. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way. He's Ryback's biggest fucking Just fan. real quick, you got Punk's number? <laughs> yeah, real quick. Just real fast. Max, Max asking if you have CM Punk's number. We, he is interested in having another guest on. Do you got Punk's number? <laughs> yeah, there you go. There another. You go. Yeah. See, comedy. 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 That's, that's, that's the second city background that you that's got the, there. That's the chops. That's the fucking chops over here. <laughs> you should watch uh, Tim Robinson's new show on Netflix. I think you should leave, it's called. He's a second city guy. It's so yeah. funny. So good. Okay. I'm way behind. I, mean, Actually, I, still you, I still haven't done my Game of Thrones. You know? you know what? Do whatever you want. I don't know why. I, I hate when people yeah, recommend things. Yeah, you to know me. what? I don't care. You know what, man? Don't tell me what to do. Yeah, yeah. I'm an sorry. adult. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, listen, we've hit about an hour. Have we really? Yeah, man. Whoa. I know. Flew by. Yeah, I know. We'll probably cut some of that Ryback stuff, so we'll be looking like, you know, But don't worry, I'll do some filler somewhere in there. Lean lean out the show a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Kind of just like, trim some of the fat. You trim a little fat there. For instance, the big guy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, yeah, do you want to promote any of your socials? Give me, sure, give me, give yeah. me all your stuff. I'm on Twitter as Hot Young Briley, but I think if you type Ryan Nemeth, I show up. That's my old wrestling name, Briley. Um, Instagram, Ry Ry Nem Nem. Adorable. Yeah, no, it, and, honestly, it's cute. It, it, it sounds like the, what you call your pet. You want to just go like this, scratch my head a little, right, bit, right, like a little bit. Right, right, nem, nem. So by the time this is anywhere, I, I uh, hope that my crowdfunding campaign for the movies out there, click on that thing, join the team. Yeah. Become a producer. Jo- join Breck and Meyer and it's $6. Breck and Meyer is going to do it. <laughs> uh, Ryback's going to do it. Yeah, yeah. I assume Beth Phoenix. I haven't confirmed that, but I'm just kind of yeah, assuming. Through. Yeah, I, I can say names too. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Robert De Niro. Let's say Keith David. There we go. Keith David. <laughs> Monica Chambers. Robert De Niro. Stinking Rose. Mm-hmm. 
light, but, light switch. Dr. Butt Stuff. But yeah. Dr. Butt Stuff and Professor Butt Stuff both. Yeah. Yes. Mouth ass. Um, <laughs> butt to mouth. Butt yeah. to mouth. Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me on your fun show. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, thanks for coming. And um, yeah, don't no, check out uh, Heal on all the... Uh, Heal! On the- yeah, on all the uh, on the uh, crowdfunding kind of stuff, and uh, thank you, Mister Nemeth. Thank you, sir. For me, thanks for the T-shirt. Hell yeah, we yeah. Match. Honestly, you made it all worth it. I only did it for the T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, <laughs> so knew I, I had you on. Had to. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna do an outro uh, later when, when Nemeth's not here, so I can make fun of him. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> later, jerks. Hey. I mean, I only do it in the beginning of the show, but uh, I'll do it at the end here. Hey, what's up, peoples? So, uh, yeah, no, I just had uh, Ray Nemeth. wasn't wasn't he wasn't he sweet? He's he's a total sweetheart from Cleveland, Ohio, Ohio, just like the Stuart P. Miller uh, from Columbus, Ohio. Um, yeah, no, honestly, he's a sweetheart. It's it's almost too bad because actually we ended up chatting for like another like twenty minutes after the the show, and I was like, ah, I should have kept the mics hot, but whatever. Um, yeah, no, he's uh, a great guy, uh, super sweet, uh, really funny. Um, I like him. And again, I think I could probably take him in a fight. Uh, so there you go. So I'm going to do my little plugs at the end here. Um, go to my Twitters. Uh, it's uh, at Incredible Kulk, uh on Twitter. And then on Instagram, it's at Kalkamania. The Kalkamania. No, just Kalkamania. Um, and then also uh, give us a call. Uh, we have a voicemail thing that we play at the end of episodes, and uh, if you leave us a voicemail, uh, we'll we'll give it to you. We'll we'll we'll, we'll play a live on air, maybe even comment on it. Um, so the number is eight four five three nine three four six two nine. That's eight four five three nine three four six two nine. That's eight four five E Z E hoax. So um yeah, give us a buzz. It's uh you know it's free. Well, I don't know if it is, but whatever. All right. Uh, I love you, and okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm tired. Goodbye. We're always getting voicemails. Eight, four, five, easy, E hoax. I said it's eight, four, five, easy, E hoax. It might sound dumb, but it's not a joke. Hey, Macaulay. This is Kevin McGee from McGee's. And I just wanted to say I heard your episode on Bunny Ears, and you were talking to Allie Willis on the show. And at the end of that episode, I heard my voice being played back in the recording at the end of the show. It was a really My little movie. buttercup has the sweetest so smile. So Mac, I heard my love the podcast. Back on the episode George too. from California, keep doing what Man. you're doing. Uh, it's well, amazing. I look forward to it um, every also, week. Also, I take it easy. Bye. I'm glad that you have done all that you do in bunny ears, and I'm glad that you have accomplished a lot of great things and so far in my life they do you hear the people sing singing the song of angry men really it is the music good. of the people who will not be slaves again when the beating of your heart echoes the beating of your drum there is a life about to start when tomorrow comes for today. On Thanks your face to and dribbles down your neck. And <laughs> your boy, he back. Have a good one, boys. Life's good. Well, I'll let you go. Find me, gag me, take me to the bunny ranch. You are freaking lumberjack! Oh my god. <laughs>